praise God enough to God be the glory to God be the glory I, I just feel like we owe him a little bit more than that I really do I really do those of you that are listening virtually we owe God a praise in your living room in your bedroom wherever you are come on in the sanctuary come on come on come on this is not a bother this is not a chore it's a privilege to be able to bless God and to know that he is God to know that he is the object of our affection and that all that we owe we owe it to the Lord look at somebody and tell them I'm only here because of God's goodness come on say that come on say it say it and then tell somebody don't think I'm not going through anything but it's by God's grace it's by his grace that's how I'm making it and that's how I'm going to keep on making it it's by God's goodness God bless you you may be seated we do thank the Lord and we do praise him I, I, I just want to put a, a little pen in here and just say this that even when we are dealing with inconveniences and, and it's a part of life we start off one way and something happens that we don't expect and it kind of throws things off but I want us to know that if we belong to God even our inconveniences have a purpose did you hear what I just said and there's a blessing in the inconvenience there's a blessing in it and God knows how to unfold his wondrous glory even when we are dealing with something that's that's unfavorable to us we were we were in New Jersey the weekend and uh, and as we were on our way to a site site that we wanted to see so badly and then all of a sudden the sign came up in my dashboard that I was losing tire pressure I'm like oh no come on not now don't do this don't do this that's why I got rid of the last car because it kept doing this this is the first time that happened with this vehicle and I realized okay I'm gonna have to get off the expressway and get air in the tire because it was showing me that the air was was seeping out and so we go over and I put air in the tire my wife Monet and grandson and about five minutes later I could see the pressure was going down again so I says okay we're just gonna have to go to a tire place and I'm gonna have to get the tire fixed or repaired this was an inconvenience but it was also a safety issue so we go to the place make a long story short they were able to plug up the tire but they said there's no guarantee how long this is gonna last so I'm thinking well we got to get back to Maryland and so I said to my wife and my daughter I says I tell you what I'll take you all back to to your house Monet to your house and then I'll go to the dealership that's what I'll do and just get another tire inconvenience it was an inconvenience it threw us off schedule but when I got to the dealership and as I was waiting this lady comes alongside and sits there and strikes up a conversation and the Lord said that's why you're here it took a leaking tire to get you to your assignment you thought you were just doing something leisurely but you belong to me and, I, and if you belong to God then Lord I'm available to you and so as I begin to talk with the lady and she began to tell me some of the things that she was dealing with and the, and the issues in her life and how she had had several strokes and da 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 and da da and finally I said to her you know what that is don't you and she says what I said you had a miracle that you survived that and we just kept talking about the Lord and talking about the things of God and talking about it. And then she was saying how she, when she was in the hospital how this man came up to her and told her because she was going to leave the hospital don't you leave this hospital you stay here you need to be seen you need to be treated and so forth and he told her some things and then she says and afterwards 
the doctors and the nurses were looking for this person and nobody could find him. I said, you know what that was, don't you? I said, that was an angel. Do you hear me? I said, let me pray for you. So there I am in the dealership praying for this lady. And she said, oh, I never felt that before. Oh my God, I never felt like this before in the dealership. And she's shaking like some of us need to be shaking right now. And so after she left, another assignment. So the man that was writing me up said to me, I don't know what y'all were talking about. He said, are you a reverend? I said, I happen to be a senior pastor. He says, wow, you came here today for me because I've been going through some stuff. And I shook his hand. I'm going to tell you something. Why don't you take somebody by the hand right now and just hold the hand. And the power of God in you, let it be transmitted. Let God flow from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We don't know from moment to moment what somebody needs. And we don't know what people are dealing with. But you can intercept the enemy's chicaneries by allowing the power of God to flow through you. And there's enough life of God in you right now to ignite a revival in the hand that you're holding. Won't you just say, Jesus, say it. Say, Jesus. I dare you to say healing. I dare you to say deliverance. I dare you to say miracle. Now say, I believe it. Come on, I believe it. And for no other reason, I came here today just to release the virtue of God in me, to release it into you, and to let you know you're going to make it. Did you hear me? Tell your neighbor, oh, you're going to make it. Tell them, I'm not going to let you go out like this. Say, you're going in victory. You're going in power. Oh, I wish somebody believed this thing for real. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. And sometimes you have to go through something to realize how real God is. God bless you. Tina Fitzhugh in the back. Sister Renee Claiborne, sister sitting all the way in the back. God bless you, Tina. God bless you real good. Oh, you're going to make it. Oh, you're going to make it, Tina. Hallelujah. And God bless you, Sister Reba, sitting next to her. We thank God for you and your daughter. Look at this. What a blessing it is that we're here today. Well, got a new tire on my car. And then the man said to me, you know what? You got tire protection. All you got to do is pay the $50 deductible. That's all you got to pay. So I came home with a new tire. <laughs> God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I want to turn your attention to one particular verse. God bless you, sir, sitting in the back. Our neighbor came back. You said you were coming back, and you're back in the house today. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. I want you to focus on this one verse. And it says this, But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace. This morning I want to talk on this thought. Grow in grace to see increase. Grow in grace to see increase let us pray father we thank you right now for blessing us to drive through all that rain yesterday it was such a heavy downpour i believe you showed us how to drive in grace and you brought us home safely you've blessed all of us this entire week and no matter what we're waiting for, look at what you've already done. And look at what you're doing. Look at what the enemy tried to do. And you blocked him. And you told him no. In the discussion. You told those demons, I've got a bloodline around that house. Those are my people. Keep your hands off of them. You have no permission to touch them. 
God, we thank you. We thank you. And we will grow in grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to clap your hands for God's grace. God's grace. His grace. What is grace? We talk about it. We talk about the grace of God. But what is it? If someone asked me years ago, what is grace? The first thing I would say, the unmerited favor of God. And someone say, what does that mean? Uh, duh. Listen, grace is the much needed, inexhaustible favor of God's extended goodness towards us. Let me say that again. Grace is the much needed, inexhaustible, which means we cannot drain God of his grace. The inexhaustible favor of God's extended goodness towards us that we cannot merit, nor can we demand it, but we should receive it gratefully. His grace. Here's another word for God's grace. Goodness. It is just God's bountiful goodness extended towards us. Let me give us a little context for understanding God's grace. By the way, if you can hear me, you can only hear me by God's grace. If you understand what I'm saying, you only understand it by God's grace. You've got to know that. Not by power nor by might of my own, but by thy spirit, by God's grace, saith the Lord. Since God is holy and God cannot fellowship with sin God gave us his grace he gave his only son Jesus Christ why to be the substitutionary sacrifice for our sins so that the penalty for sin death could be paid by his son substitutionary in our place so God didn't say, well, I'll let it slide. Nope, because God cannot countenance sin. So God sent his son to be the recipient of his judgment so that you and I could then become in fellowship with God if we would believe. That's grace. Jesus became God's grace to us. Therefore, we worship Jesus because he removed sin, the only blockage between man and God. Tell him thank you right now. Tell him thank you. Come on. So, so, so Romans 5.15 puts it like this. And I'm going to read it from the Living Bible. And what a difference between man's sin and God's forgiveness. Think about it. What a difference between man's sin and God's forgiveness. For this one man, Adam, brought death to many through his sin. But this one man, Jesus Christ, brought forgiveness to many through God's mercy. And you will see throughout scriptures that grace will couple itself. You will have grace and mercy, grace and and peace, grace, and love. It's all God's goodness. And so God will give us what we don't deserve because of mercy sparing us what we do deserve. God will give us grace, his goodness, coupled with his peace so that we have a sense of assurance God will give us grace, his goodness, coupled with joy so that we have an exuberant happiness that abides within us. That all is the grace of God. For by grace are ye saved. By grace are ye delivered. And that not of yourselves. It is the what? It is the what? Grace is God's gift. It's God's gift. It's something that God bestows upon us. Why? Because he loves us. And God delights to see us full of joy. There are two 
primary types of grace. Two primary types of grace. And by the way, a person who doesn't appreciate grace is very prideful. A person who doesn't appreciate God's grace is conceited. A person who doesn't appreciate God's grace is foolish. Because you think you're doing it on your own. But it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. And if you're doing the right thing, you're even doing the right thing by God's grace. If you had a change of mind for the good, that was nothing but God's grace. Because you were already going the wrong way. And all of a sudden you got convicted in your heart. That was nothing but God's grace. When you turned around and said, I'll go back to my father. That was God's grace. When you recognize you were walking in darkness, that was God's grace. How many people are walking in darkness and thinking they're walking in light? How many people are walking in death and thinking they're walking in life? It's God's grace. Wave your hand and say, thank God for his grace. The only way I could stand here right now is God's grace. There were so many things that could have taken me out yesterday, but God. His grace. Two primary types of God's grace. Listen, there's common grace. Say common grace. Common grace is indiscriminately given to all of mankind, whether saved or unsaved, because Jesus' death satisfied God's demands to judge our inherited sin. We were born sinners. We were born into sin and shaping in iniquity and should have been cut off at the very point of death. Say, but God subsequently we are favored with common grace general blessings like the air you breathe taking a deep breath right now just taking a breath that's number god's grace did you hear what i said some people have to be intubated just to get the oxygen into their lungs and that's still god's grace hear me now what about the rain that falls from the sky we need it we can't make it happen on our own. So that's God's what? That's God's grace. Matthews 545 says that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the and the unjust. So that's common grace. Things that. People just receive every day. People that curse God don't even know that they are even cursing him by his grace. That he would even tolerate that. That ain't nothing but God's grace. And you need to thank God that you know better than to do that. But then there is special grace. Special grace. Say special grace. Special grace is reserved for God's children. For his family members. Now, that's different from common grace because you have to be in the family to get the special grace. What does the special grace uh, 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 provide for us? Spiritual gifts and virtues that enable victorious living through faith in Jesus Christ. These are not available to non-family members. So if you are able to discern in the spirit that someone's smile is covering up an evil intent, that's God's grace. If you hear the scripture read and all of a sudden, boom, the light bulb comes on and you get a revelation, guess what? That's God's grace. These are spiritual gifts. The fact that you can have an exuberant amount of love towards somebody else. That's God's grace. But it's only afforded to family members. So that the church can actually be in a storm. Here we go. And experience the grace of God. Peace. Everybody else is losing it. And you're at peace. Why are you at peace? God's grace. You just know it's going to be all right. You know, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to survive this because I'm living by God's grace. And so grace and mercy. So if I just confess my sins to God, 
He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's God's grace. You have, have, maybe none of you have, but maybe some of you can relate to me. You ever had a wrong thought? I know most of you haven't experienced that. I get it. I get it. I get it. But for the few of us in here, I'll raise my hand. Have I had a wrong thought before? And, and, and you knew it was wrong. And you also knew it displeased God. Why did God still shower his favor on me? Why did God still love me? Why did God still open up a door for me? I should have been disqualified. Say, but grace. Ah, Lamentations puts it like this. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions, what? Say it again. I want everybody to say fail not. His compassions, they fail not. They are new when? You mean this morning when I awakened, there was a whole new batch of fresh mercies from God. Come on. What about when I get so frustrated, I forget to tell God, thank you. Well, this is nothing but his mercies that we're not consumed for his compassions. They fail not. They are new every morning. Why? Great is thy what? Who's faithful? The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. I can hope because God gives me a new portion of his mercy, a new portion of his grace, and therefore I give him thanks. Thank God for his mercy when his justice requires judgment. And yet he poured out his wrath on his son to spare me. God, I thank you. I just want to share a few points with you. And listen, I don't, don't sit in here and be frustrated this morning. Don't be frustrated because you're sitting here by his grace. And God is going to say something this morning that's going to pop up in your life this week. And you're going to be able to say, God, I thank you for your grace. Because we want to grow in grace. What does it mean to grow in grace? It means that you don't just touch it here or there. But this is just my lifestyle. This is how I operate. Here's my first point. We must grow in grace to see increase when we're in need of a gap filler. Say gap filler. What, 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 what are you talking about? A gap filler. Well, if you're standing in between the promise and its fulfillment, we need grace to fill in that gap. Because sometimes the struggle is waiting. I know what God promised. I, 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 I know what God said he was going to do. So I heard it, but I still don't see it. I heard it, but I don't feel it. I heard it, but I can't touch it. So I need grace to fill in the gap. Listen to this. Grace fills the gap for whatever is lacking until the promise is fulfilled. Good God. And sometimes we can mess up if we do the wrong thing in the gap. But God will fill that gap. And we see that he did that with Joseph in the scriptures. Because Joseph had a dream. And Joseph saw his family members bowing to him. Which meant he was going to be an authority. And they were going to give him allegiance. But something happened from the time he had the dream he ended up in a pit then he ended up in Potiphar's house being falsely accused anybody ever been falsely accused and everybody don't always tell you what they think but you can feel it and then he ended up in prison and then he was forgotten but he had a promise so he needed something to fill the gap so he wouldn't throw in the towel so he wouldn't quit. So he wouldn't say there's nothing to this thing. And some of us right now need a gap filler. Because <laughs> I got a promise. Look at your neighbor and say, I got a promise. Good God, but I'm still waiting on this thing to come to fruition. And by the way, check this out. When God made the promise, it was done. 
Now that's the, that's the hard thing to believe. What do you mean it was done? I don't see it in my checking account. What do you mean it was done? I just got my doctor's report. Well, you're talking about two dimensions, eternity and time. When God spoke it, he spoke it from eternity. And what exists in eternity is eternal. Has no beginning and no end. So if God declared you're healed in eternity, guess what? Not will be. Oh, somebody help me right now. Not going to be. As somebody said to me one time, after I prayed and I sweated and I was carrying on with them. And I just knew they felt what I was feeling. And I said, do you believe? He said, I hope so. I wanted to knock them right upside the head after I had prayed for them. You hope so. And the hope wasn't real hope, like expectation. It was like, I'm not sure. But when God said it, it was done then. And if we could start taking God at his word, the Lord is my shepherd. When? When, saints? Now faith what? Is right now. So grace fills the gap for whatever is lacking until the promise is fulfilled. And that means I can start living according to the nowness of God. I can start living that way. Now, I know some of you say, oh, that's just positive thinking. I ain't talking about no positive thinking. I'm talking about truth. I'm talking about the word of God. Do you know God right now has already considered your next miracle? I know some of you don't even believe it. Because you said, well, (laughs) gap filler, and you talk about the next miracle. Every miracle that has been allotted for your life is already known by God. And we said the other Sunday, even your angels know their assignments. Now, I tell you what would be awesome if the church would start praising God like we really believe what he said. I know, but most people like to live in their feelings. Every now and then, you need to come out of your feelings. Tell your feelings, stay right there, because I know you ain't going nowhere. Stay right there. I'm coming out of you right now because you want to limit me. You want to restrict me. You want to confine me. I'm going to tell you what your feelings really want to do. You want to control me. But I refuse to be controlled by something that changes from minute to minute. I need something that's stable. I need something that's sure-footed. And that's nothing but truth. And if God is good, then I'm going to live like I serve a good God. Point number two. We must grow in grace. That means mature in grace. That means develop in grace to see increase when we are in need of a divine favor. Anybody need a favor from God? What is favor? Favor is when we are granted an opportunity that otherwise we wouldn't get. Favor is when a door is open to you that was shut. That's favor. Favor is when a handshake is given and say, consider it done. That's favor. Favor is when someone says, I need somebody to say, oh, you, and choose you. That's what? That's favor. Favor is when the sun is scorching hot upon you, and then a cloud appears and just stands hovers over you. That ain't nothing but favor favor and some of us have learned to look for favor from God grace grants favor by way of a supernatural attraction to help us to fulfill a role somebody say something come on say something that that's that's favor anybody living for God's favor huh I would have lost my mind except for favor. Except I knew God had my back. 
And, and this, this is what God will do for us. And, and God will use inconvenience to, to move us where we normally would not have been because God wants to do a favor for us. God wants to, sometimes we may not know we need something and God will put us in a position to get what we need. Well, guess what? When we were coming back in all that hard rain, I was thanking God that I had a new tire in the back. Huh? Now, Lord said, now you know how to get what I need to have before I need it. And some of us right now don't even know what we need tomorrow. And God then granted favor to us and made us make decisions we would have never made. Just so when the time of need comes, you're in position. I wish you would tell God thank you for that. So we must grow in grace so that we can see increase in divine favor in our lives. That when somebody tells me no, then I say, God, I need a favor. <laughs> you know, you got to have that kind of relationship with God. You can talk to God like that. Lord, now you heard what he just said. I need a favor. And if I have a relationship with God, if God and I are friends, you know, you can go to a friend for a what? For a favor. How many know that he sticks closer to you than a brother? And I got two brothers sitting over here and one in the back. And I love you, David. I really do. Sam, whatever. But I love you. Stevie, I love you. You love me, Stevie? Oh, see, he's the only one that's going to tell, sell it. But the reality is, God is closer to me than Sam, David, Stevie. When I can't get y'all, because y'all won't answer my text when I sent you a text. Stevie responded to a text I sent him yesterday, this morning. God, I need a favor. You hear what I'm saying? And I know they love me. I accidentally called Deacon Al Spence last night. I was getting up from my desk and some kind of thing. I wasn't trying to call you that time of night. But unlike Sam and David and Stevie, he called me right back. Okay, let me, let me get out of my feelings. But sometimes we just need a favor from God. Lord, and you know what? I used to pray like this. Lord, if you do this, I won't ask for another thing. Don't pray like that. that that's a silly prayer. Like God only has 10 left and you're bargaining for that 110. His grace is inexhaustible. If God just poured out an abundant blessing, he has a storeroom of abundant blessings with your name on it. And God is saying, if I continue to shower you moment after moment, you can't exhaust my goodness towards you. That's the love of God. And when I fall, guess what? He'll pick me up because his grace is unlimited. Point number three, we must grow in grace to see increase when we need divine empowerment. You ever felt weak? You ever felt exhausted? You ever felt tired? Well, there's some things that we need divine empowerment from God. That's his grace to give me the strength to do what I could never do on my own. Listen to this. Grace empowers during times of weakness and fatigue. Oh, Lord, I wish I had a witness in the house with that one. When sometimes, Lord, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I need to do. But I don't have the energy or I don't have the mental bandwidth in order to tolerate this. But God's grace, it will empower me to do what I could not do in my own natural ability. God said to Paul, when he said, can you remove this thorn? Because it's wearing me out. It, it, you, know, you, know, you know, say, I, I'll deal with this and I'll deal with that. But I can't deal with another one of this. I just can't handle another one. And I feel like I'll do whatever I need to do if this is the last time. <laughs> like we can pick and choose. And the Lord said, I tell you what, Paul, I'm not going to move this thorn. But my grace is sufficient. I'm going to teach you something with this thorn. I'm going to develop you with this thorn. 
I'm going to give you a revelation of who I am that you would never get if you didn't have this issue, if you didn't have this problem. But I'm but I'm going to take care of you. I got your back. It ain't going to destroy you. It's not going to take you out. But you, what you really need is not for me to move the thorn. You need my grace. Good God from Zion. You need my favor. You need my empowerment. You need my goodness to allow you to persevere and to survive and to overcome. And I want to say this to you. Hear me real good. We can say God is great. And it's true. But we can really say it. when We have been in the very pit of a struggle. And God comes through. Then we can say, I was weak. I was sick. I was down. I was oppressed. But God, I just need three witnesses in the house. Because God said when two or three are gathered, he said he's going to be in the midst. I need three witnesses. I need somebody to say, you know what? I should not be be here right now but his grace was sufficient and I need you to know I still got my testimony intact I still know I belong to God I still have a purpose and I still have hope I want somebody on this side of the church to say something my grace I thank God for the witnesses over here my grace my grace is sufficient how in the world did you survive the last two crises in your life it was nothing but God's grace and we're so focused on this and that that we fail to realize we listen uh, and I love all the songs y'all did today you talking about we believe God for it but while we're believing God for it we need to thank him for all that I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to thank him for all of that come on come on come on Come on, church, church of the living God, church of baptized, spirit-filled believers. I'm still, we, 30 seconds ain't up yet, and it shouldn't be that much of a struggle. I want us to get to a point where we say, give God the praise. It just goes there. Just go there. His grace, his grace, his grace is sufficient. You know what that means? That means it is adequate to cover the need that's what it's trying to say you're dealing with some issues on your job his grace is sufficient yes it is you got to go through some series of treatments his grace is sufficient whatever we need to deal with they said it was going to come on thursday and here it is friday here it is saturday guess what his grace is what well somebody say something to you that just hits the wrong spot Guess what? His grace is what? Grace is sufficient. Uh-huh. His grace is sufficient, Monet. His grace is sufficient. Yeah, it is. It's sufficient, Jamesy. His grace is sufficient. By the way, he was on the iPad yesterday. Whatever he was watching in Spanish. That's how he's learning Spanish. He's learning it from going on the device. His grace is sufficient. I wish you would just understand. And sometimes the way God teaches is the opposite of the way we want to learn. But God knows how to really get the point home to us. And, and, and there's something, if I could pick and choose how my circumstances would be, I wouldn't pick that. I would pick that. So let's go in the store and on the shelf and say, I'll take that, this, that, this, and that. Anything else? And Lord said, what about this? Oh, Lord, please, no. Uh-uh. No, not that. Not that. Lord said, no, if you don't get any of that, you have to get this. Because this is going to make you what you ought to be. This is going to take you where you got to go. This is going to transform you and give you an insight into who I am. And we'll never know who we are until we know who he is. And some of us are trying to know who we are without knowing who he is. Jesus Christ proved he was God by way of the cross. 
Did you hear me? Now he was already God. He was already God. He created the world. And yet he proved his sonship. Not by, as Satan said, then ask the Lord to come down and save you, to spare you of this. Nope. I'm going to prove who I am by way of the struggle because that's where the real integrity is. That's where the real character is. Fourth point, and I'm done. We must grow in grace when we are in need of divine help. And sometimes, and I think the worst thing in the world is to need help and don't ask for it. Some, sometimes we can be prideful and we don't want to show that we need help. But it makes sense if you do to ask for it. Well, there's sometimes we need help from God and God alone. And I want to thank God over the past mm, 10 days, I, th th there were three things I needed from God. I really needed. And only God could do it. Did you hear what I just said? And the Lord did too. And it was God. It was nobody but God. I was so grateful. But I said, Lord, but this one, this is the biggie. This, this, this is the one that really counts. And the Lord said, didn't I take care of those two? Didn't I do it? You know I did it, right? Yes, Lord. Then why do you think I wouldn't do the third one? So what I want you to do, in between your planning your midday lessons, I'm trying to tell you how God talks to me. In between your typing your notes for Sunday, in between your having your staff meetings, in between your ministering to other pastors that call you, I want you to start thanking me for the third thing. That's what he told me. I want you to start thanking me for it. He said, you know the way I moved in New Harvest last Sunday and how the power of God broke out in here? He said, why would you hold back my praise because you're waiting for the manifestation how about if you start praising me according to my reality and my reality is it was done when you said it he said before you called I had already answered it wasn't even your desire it was mine that I gave to you and so I need you to start praising me right now. And I said, God, first forgive me for being apprehensive about praise when it was already done. And I'm just here to tell you, I made the phone call. The first person told me, well, it might. That, that, was, that was the best girlfriend could say. Well, we'll see. It might. And my wife is sitting there saying, what is he talking about? You know, I'll tell you. Listen. She's probably saying, what, 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 what's going on? I forgot she was here. Listen. The Lord said, call back. Call back. And another man answered the phone. And I told him, such, 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 such. And he said, okay. Da, 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 da. And then he says, we'll do this and do that. And we'll take care of it. And then the Lord said, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Then he said, you know what I'm talking about. Then he said, I just need you to send this form in with an electronic signature. Dixie Marika, I almost called you. And I said, so what are you saying? You want me to scan it? I said, oh, God, here I go. I can't stand these, all these digital stuff. Why can't I just sign the paper and go to your office across town? But he's way on the West Coast somewhere. Why you had to be on the West Coast? Okay. I'm thinking, I don't remember how to scan. I don't know how to do it. So I says, oh, oh, I, I, 
if I do electronic signature online, then I can just, uh, yeah. So like, I go online to, to do the electronic signature, and then something else jump up and say, join this for free. And then if you do this, then you can do that. I said, I'm not trying to do all that. I just want to put an X right here, push the button, and it go over there. And I push it, and then something else kind of say, for $9.99 a month. I said, oh my God. Then I got stuck in a maze. I couldn't, couldn't get, I cut it off, cut it back on, cut it off. Cut. So finally, I said, let me go ask my wife. So she said, well, all you got to do is, that's her favorite word. All you got to do is, no, it ain't all you got to do is. I've been trying to do this for 45 minutes. It ain't all you got to do is. So she said, well, just do this and just do that. And then she then, tip, 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 tip. You see that? And I said, yeah. I said, girl, if you don't push that button in a minute. I pushed it. Thing went through. Called the man back. And I said, do you have it? He says, no. He said, it may not, it may not be done until Monday. I said, tell you what, I'm calling you back at 3 o'clock. And I heard God say, it's done. <laughs> it's done. I'm, I'm not talking about just some, some little piece of something. I'm talking about something that matters. I called him back at 345. I said, do you have it? I was going to call you. And he said, Mr. Johnson, I got it. He said, it's done. I would tell you the details, but it's none of your business. But I'm trying to tell you, God had already promised me it was done. That's when we should praise him. So now I'm going to ask you right now, do you have a praise for God, what you're waiting to be manifested? And if you do, what you going to do about it? I'm asking you right now in the house, is God's grace sufficient for you? Then praise him because he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, then he's going to make it good. And it has, listen, it has, last Sunday we said, you got mail. It has already left the throne room. Did you hear what I said? It has already left the throne room and it's coming to your door. And this is how you sign for it. You give God the praise. Come on and praise him now. I don't know who I'm talking to. I want to tell you, you won't realize it until, it's, until you put a praise on it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now listen, the time of need is merely the time of manifestation. Hear me, hear me. Even if you're sick in your body, the time you need to walk in the healing is the manifestation. You may be sick all the way. This is your manifestation over there. God promised you right here. Now, go to your next assignment. It's over there. How do you feel? I'm feeling worse. But I got a promise. He's a gap filler. So the grace is going to sustain me all the way from here till I get there. Deacon Jamie, come here a second. Come here a second. I want you to help me with this demonstration. Good God, good God, good God, good God. Okay, I see Brother Sam coming up here. So go get that chair over there for me, please. Because sometimes God wants to demonstrate. Hear this. We think God only wants to demonstrate to us. Missed the whole point. Can you put that chair over there where Sam is standing? Sam, you go and sit down over there, mind your business. This is the kind of brothers I have to deal with. Listen, so check this out. I think God just wants to demonstrate to me his grace. God wants me to be settled in his grace. The demonstration should not be for me. D did you grab that? We're trying to say, God, convince me. 
He said, when I spoke to you, you should have been convinced then. So the convincing is not to you. But there are demons that are watching. I'm trying to convince the demons that have been assigned to stop you. Wait a minute. But then God said, but there are angels who don't know redemption. They're watching. The Bible says they inquire to see. And so I'm demonstrating to demons. I'm demonstrating to angels. But here's another one. There's somebody else at the dealership that's writing up your paperwork and they're watching. And what you do between here and there is going to make a difference in their decision. And he is saying, my grace is sufficient to get you. Now, Deacon Jamie, I want you to, when I get close, I want you to move the chair. Because sometimes we, we think, if I, can, if I can just get here, if I can just get here. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. I was already ready to go here. Now it didn't move. I want you to move it again. So I go over here. My grace is sufficient. I want you to take it all the way over there to that light. But God, I barely had strength to get over here. The Lord is saying, but there were some demons that hadn't showed up. Now they're here. They're watching. That drama that happened on your job, that was demonic activity. So I'm going to show them I'm your God. I'm going to show them I'm your friend. I'm going to show them that I stick closer to you than a brother. And I'm going to show them that my word cannot return back to me void. It's got to accomplish what I please. And you're going to take a seat in there, your assignment. But my grace that got you from here to there to all the way over there. That's the way it was when I had my accident and the doctor said one surgery will fix it. How did one surgery turn into nine? But what got me through nine surgery, my grace is sufficient for thee. And here I am now, seated together with Christ in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I wish somebody would thank God for his grace right now. Come on. Every time you clap your hands, you are magnifying the Lord with me and exalting his name together. And God is saying, you think you've seen my goodness. You have just begun to see how good I am to you. I'm about to show you and prove to you some things that I've been thinking about you from before you were born. Before you walked the earth, I had already planned the date and the time that I would blow your mind. I just need you to trust my grace and be willing to go through the challenges and be willing to take the tests. But God is saying, I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to drop you. I got your back and your worst problem will be the impetus for your greatest miracle somebody lift your hands and tell god thank you tell him thank you action subscribe to new harvest ministry and smash that like button and smash the notification bell so you won't miss another video